That was Friday the 13th 3, Revenge of the Sith. Uh, it was pretty big. Nightmare pretty on Elm Street 4. <laughs> there uh, was a dog named Jason in it, Yes, right? featuring Jason as a dog. Jason the dog. He didn't wear a golden mask or even like a, what, a space suit in Jason X or whatever. I mean, Jason could come back as a dog. I think so. Yeah. Makes about as much sense as Friday the 13th Part 6. Uh, Friday the 13th Part 6? Oh my gosh, I forgot how many of these were. they were. Part 6 was actually really good. All right, <laughs> I so really liked Part 6. Nightmare on Elm Street. Nightmare on Elm Street 4. four. Uh, uh, the Dream War Master. Uh, it was kind of like Friday the 13th 2. The plot, in a way, like he like needs someone as a conduit to mean, get to other people. Nightmare on Elm Street Two. Oh my gosh! A Nightmare on Elm Street Two, where they needed a conduit to get to other people's dreams. Except, yeah, yeah kind of like that. Because he kills all the Elm Street kids, right, at the beginning. And then it's like, what do we do now? Well, he wants more souls, right? Because yeah. he's eternal or something. Yeah. So he he uses this girl to kill more people. Yeah. The movie had uh, some... The beginning was awful. The end was kind of cool because there were some really interesting, yeah, really I mean, cool effects. There were some very cerebral moments. Like, there was some... It played on a lot of fears people have. Like, the botched surgery type thing. Like, with the, the mask coming at him and stuff. Like, that's scary. Or when she turns into a cockroach. And that was, that was scary. Yeah. I don't know. It reminded me a lot of, like... Batman v Superman, where there's like, oh, it's some good, like, imagery, but it yeah. doesn't really mean anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or the, geez, what, the end, like, whenever all of the souls are coming out, mm -hmm. that was really cool looking. That was scary. I was, I was disturbed watching that. And then there were scenes where he puts on sunglasses <laughs> at the beach. It's like, what was that? Uh... Cool Freddy is my favorite Freddy. <laughs> we looked it up. There are action figures of that. I think uh, it's probably like a custom. Yeah, okay. There's. Uh, I, no. I saw online that people are selling those sunglasses, actually. Inspired by the movie. The movie that... Uh, the highly critically acclaimed Nightmare on Elm Street 4. The Dream Master. Uh, the, the mythology wasn't very well explained. Apparently, she like guards the gate of the positive dreams... And he guards the gate of the negative dreams. <laughs> I don't think they had it in their head. Oh, tell him, tell him the story about James Cameron. Oh, so like James Cameron asked like the director of this movie, like, oh, how are they gonna bring back Freddy in this one? And he's like, a dog is gonna piss fire, and Freddy's gonna be alive again. And then and they, they just they, used they, they, that. They used it. There was the car park. That part where Freddy, his skeleton, came back to life. That was really cool looking. It was. And then there's the beach scene. What are some other really bad deaths they had? There was quite a few of them. Hmm. Uh, how did Rick die again? Oh. Oh, uh, there was one kid that got pulled into a waterbed. That was interesting. <laughs> oh, right? yeah. I liked that one. That was, that was kind of funny. That was kind of funny. Yeah. Freddy, uh, he gets more... His lines get more and more cheesy as time goes on. Like, the, the, the classic... Uh, He's in his he's in his doc, doctor garb and he says, "Oh, it's Freddy. Oh, I ain't Doctor Seuss. That's a that's an immortal line which will stand the test of time." <laughs> yep, that's classic lines like uh, like uh, make him an offer he can't refuse. You're gonna need a bigger boat. <laughs> well, it ain't Doctor Seuss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Yes. Uh, what else is there to say? Uh, there's a, the, the death count was really high in this one because, uh, Ice Count, uh, they realized that uh, the plot didn't matter. It's kind of like these movies have begun becoming more and more like Godzilla films if time goes on. They care less and less about the plot and more about the deaths what? and the fights. Okay, here's the thing. Three was like a good movie halfway and then it stopped being a good movie and was just like kind of goofy and cheesy. Right. And I think that was kind of a turn for the whole series. Right. Because Cause like, they're not trying to be scary. Anymore. I didn't like... While I didn't like 2 as much, it was still at least kind of trying to be serious. Yeah. And, like, we've moved past that now. Right. Like, in my head, I always compare it to that scene in the first one, like, in terms of deaths, where she's, like, writhing around and suddenly thrown to the ceiling and stuff. That scared me when I saw that. 
I compare all of these scenes to that, and I'm like, what happened? Do it? Are they even trying? No. Uh, well, they are. I mean, they, the 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 effects are getting better. Things like that. They have access to more money. I think. Yeah. Like where the scene she turns into a cockroach. Really well done. Scary. And then the Kafka esque. Yeah. They and they had the. Don't worry. They had the the. What's the gun? What's what's the guy's Chekhov's name? Gun. Chekhov's gun in the beginning because she squished a cockroach and they're like, oh, let it go. It's just a cockroach. I wonder how many of these videos have referenced Chekhov's gun. Well, these these films are rather formulaic, so because uh, it's like show the thing at the beginning. Oh, it's a thing later. Oh, she killed the cockroach, so he turns her into a cockroach and then squishes her. Get it? Get it? That's that's called irony. <laughs> yeah. Is it? <laughs> Not really. Maybe. I think it would be ironic if they were made of iron. That's a that's an obscure quote for you. Oh, you red versus blue fans. All right. Um, um yeah. The acting was not good. Oh. Okay. So, Kristen from the last movie is back, but it's not Patricia Arquette, who's no, the person a, whose name I couldn't remember it's last a, time. It's a different it's a different character. It's a different actress and she's bad. She's bad. And her not friend as as, Alice, not as bad as Alice, is bad. Yeah. And Alice's brother, uh, Rick, Rick, is discount Christian Slater. He kind of looks like like the one of the backup members for Wham that like failed the audition or something. Like this dude, the amount this dude wants to be Christian Slater is amazing. Yeah, his his hair, uh, it was it was fantastic. <laughs> I couldn't keep my eyes off it, I'll tell you that. It, it, it was slicked back, but spiked up at the same time. It was like the 90s and the, the late 80s had a horrible, sickening love child. Uh, his, that's on... called the uh, 88 through 91. <laughs> <laughs> What's it, when did this film come out? 89? 88. Yeah, hey, there we go. Uh, I wonder what the next one's going to be. Is it going to... What's the next one? The, the Dream, Dream Child. child. Yeah, it's... it's like Freddy's Revenge, and then it's like... The Dream Warriors, the Dream Master, the Dream Child. Right. And then Freddy's dead. Yeah, Freddy's dead. And the New Nightmare! Wait, there's a... There's another one? The New Nightmare? Yeah, what's Craven's New Nightmare? But he makes it, so... It must be... Kind of decent? <laughs> well, we'll have to see. We'll, we'll let you know when that comes, because it's definitely October, and we're watching these sequentially. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I'm not wearing shorts. It's so cold. <laughs> yeah, we live in Texas. It's still warm in yeah. October. I'm sure, I'm sure. Yeah, watch your mouth. Global global warming. It's going to be super cold. <laughs> don't don't worry. I mean, climate change. I'm sorry. Climate change. Yeah. All right. Cracking so. open a cold planet. <laughs> With the boys. <laughs> That's going to be a relevant meme in October. We swear. All memes are going to be relevant forever. Uh, but when are memes going to become unrelevant? Memes stopped being relevant in 2009. No, they didn't. Everyone loves memes. That was Rage Faces, man. That was Rage Comics. So. Uh, Meme memes are dead. Memes are... No, they're not. Are they? Meme memes are dead, and we killed them. We killed them? What was the last meme? Was it Pepe? Was Pepe the last true meme? Did we kill Pepe? <laughs> We're not having this discussion. Did Freddy right kill? Pe did Freddy kill Pepe? <laughs> yep, Freddy killed memes. <laughs> <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street Eight: The Death of the, Dude, the Meme Child. <laughs> Freddy was like super lucrative back in the day. Like, I'll probably have made this comparison somewhere else by this point. But, like, Freddy in the 80s was the equivalent of, like, what the Minions are today. He was everywhere. If we had Facebook in the 80s, it would be Freddy's picture next to quotes from obscure comedians that they stole. Are you sure? I don't know if Freddy has the same appeal with suburban mothers that uh, the Minions do. That's fair. My name is Freddy, and I'm here to say... <laughs> Check your Facebook every day. <laughs> oh, did we talk about the rap in the last one? Uh, a little bit. Okay. It was this one. I was wrong. This is the one that has the rap song. Yes, it's it's it's. It was also the one he hosted MTV for. What? 
I mean, Weird Al hosted MTV, but he was like MTV's love child, so I guess that... Was Freddie MTV's, like, step love child? Sure. Yes. All right, you heard it here, folks. Folks, memes are dead. So my advice to you is to stay ready, because you know who's back? <laughs> Freddie. It's Freddy and I'm here to say I'll wrap you up and take you away Feel like you're tired and ready for bed Don't fall asleep or you'll wake up dead